Thank you for joining us. Yeah, now, it is great to be here. The Jeunesse Musicale Internationale is very involved with music education. Now, can you give us your thoughts about music education across different continents, things that you have seen that are similar and different between different countries around the world? Well, there are many things that are both similar and different. So okay. if I have to be short, <laughs> I would say that uh, what is m very much important yes. is to start the music education in schools and outside schools through NGOs, non-profit organizations, community work and so on, so that in parallel we can build up an audience yes. and generations of audiences that will appreciate music for what it is. Absolutely agreed. In The Jeunesse Musicale that you are at is based in Belgium, yes? It's the headquarters, are there? Yes, in Brussels. Okay, but you travel worldwide. Right. Okay. We have many, many organizations uh, in different countries, as this was already mentioned. Yes. In the United States, there is a big trend for um, musicians to become teaching artists. So there are graduates of places like Juilliard, and in, instead of just purely going into performance, um, you know, Carnegie Hall is a program called Ensemble Connect, in which they're training the sort of postgraduate musician to become um, an advocate for music. Is this something that you see across the world as well? And what do you think about that phenomenon? Well, I think that that's, that's something which is very important, mm -hmm. especially if we are talking about declining audiences. And one thing that uh, has never been taught at schools before is actually how to communicate and yes. build up your audience. Yeah. And of course, we are talking about audience buildings by concert halls, institutions, organizations, uh, but never uh, how the artists feel about it and how and what they can do about it. Right. So this is one of these programs that can actually support. So it. you believe that the performers do have some sort of role in educating their audiences or cultivating the, uh, their audiences, the, the leading one, illuminating them. Yes. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Wonderful. Well, what can arts organizations like yours do to provide meaningful educational experiences for young people? Um, first of all, there are many uh, different experiences on the ground. Mm -hmm. okay. So one of the things that we are good at as, as art organizations is the bringing these experiences on the table, um, uh, teaching the know-how, exchanging the know-how, and then coming up with even better standards that can be then again replicated locally. That's Wonderful. fantastic. I mean. Now, the, the Jeunesse Musicale, it emerged actually as a, a form of, was it a peaceful protest, yes? Yeah, uh, in the 1940s, and this reminds us of that famous Bernstein quote, this will be a reply to violence, to make music more intensely, more beautifully, and more devotedly than ever before. Do you feel that music can still serve as an effective call for peace today in 2017? Uh, well, music being the, I would say, a sound, Mm -hmm. And sound is something that follows the humanity since its beginning. Yes. And uh, there is nothing better than music to express our inner feelings and share them with other human beings. Absolutely. And that nothing else makes peace better than music. Oh, wow. So <laughs> succinctly so and yeah, yeah, so profound stated. and actually so important, especially, you know, in light of current events. And um, we feel very hopeful here being at an event like this with such young talent and passionate musicians. What do you what are your uh, sort of opinions on the, the state of, of classical music now? And where do you think it's heading in the future? Well, if, if, if uh, many people are not aware that actually there is uh, classical music is much more than we usually think by definition. Yes. And it, it also counts, uh, if I look into me and my youth, when I was a teenager, discovering that, oh, I have heard that, I have heard that in cartoons or in movies or here and there, and then I see that classical music is all around me. Yes. I was just not aware of it. So this sensitization and awareness raising and making the classical music uh, kind of uh, even more present in our everyday, everyday life is something that we should all strive to, to achieve. Right. And I think that uh, the classical music today has even a better chance to be present everywhere, especially through, let's say, modern means like digital technologies, mm -hmm. but at the same time not undermining the opportunities that concert halls and this type of events give to actually uh, meet the people. Right. and meet the classical music live right. and experience it in life, both for the artists and for the audiences alike. Yeah. Exactly. Well, what sort of advice would you give to novice listeners of classical music 
either the ones on our webcast here or the ones who go to concerts for the first time. Or the ones who are scared to go to concerts, yeah. actually. Scared to go to concerts. There's nothing scary, scary of concerts. Concerts can be quite beautiful. In fact, um, I would say, yes, you can listen to your classical piece at home mm -hmm. or at your um, iPhone or iPad or any other device. But that, there is nothing like emotionally perceiving and taking in that classical piece as life among other people, in front of the audiences, in front of the artists and the orchestras. And we 100% oh, so agree. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, before we conclude, we wanted to ask you a series of short questions to which we'd like you to answer instinctively or quickly. Mr. Smilevsky, you are in the hot seat for climb burning questions. Let's start. <laughs> Um, what was your first memory as a child? My first memory as a child, my blanket. Oh. Your blanket. That's a classic. Your favorite non-classical artist? Non-classical. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, that would be Metallica. Oh, yes. 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 Rock uh, out. Favorite herb or spice? Spice. Favorite herb or spice? Herb or spice? Uh, yeah. Pepper. Black. Which composer would you like to have dinner with? Which composer? Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be alive. Beethoven. Oh, Beethoven. Beethoven, nice. And finally, what is also your... Also, there is time put for me to meet him for dinner yet. <laughs> <laughs> and what is your favorite, or your desert island recording? If you can only have one. One. Oh, Stairways to Heaven. Oh, Stairway to Heaven, oh, yes. I love the see, classic ah, rock, yes. Thank it. you so much. Thank you so much for joining us, Blasco.